Hi guys and welcome to another one of the Forgotten Ones. This time around we've got part 3 and the focus will be the uh, Nice HCK Himalaya. This is uh, Nice HCK's current top of the line IEM. It's single DD. Priced uh, anywhere between uh, $300 and $329 depending on where you get it. I got this particular unit from Hi-Fi Go. Uh, and yeah, let's, let's get into it. So, box nice classy you know really the typical nice hck kind of look in the back we've got you know some details about the im 22 ohm impedance 110 dbs of sensitivity it's a 10 millimeter dynamic driver um, they say it's a they say it's a, a cnt carbon nano nanotube uh, diaphragm and then it's got uh, nozzles as well uh, they've got a gold nozzle, which they say it's got the, the balanced uh, tuning. Which they've got a, they call it a gray, but it looks black to me. But anyway, uh, they say that's the uh, high frequency nozzle. And then they've got a blue one, which uh, they say is the base nozzle. Anyway, I'll, I'll show you the, the nozzles in a couple of minutes. So that's the box. Open it up. Inside, the IMs came over there. Lift this out. And then we have the case. Nice selection of tips, <coughs> nice HCK in that department, never disappoints. The cable is a modular cable, uh, I'm using the 4.4 termination, cleaning tool. Um, I mean, really nothing that can be said and, you know, truth be told, this is what I expect when we're talking about this kind of price. After all, at this price range, we are, uh, you know, going into... Um, into a, into a territory that uh, we, we expect, at least I expect, good quality accessories, a good a good unpackaging experience. Everything has to be, uh, you know, the part. So that's the the, the, the box. Um, the IM itself. Oops, sorry, I was grabbing the wrong the wrong one. This is the actual case, as you can see. Uh, nice, plenty space. The said nozzles that they talk about. Um, yeah, okay, I can. Yeah, dark grey, uh, black nozzle. Fair enough. The blue one. And the, the gold one, okay? Anyway, those are the nozzles, the carrying case. The cable is a very nice cable. Very, very nice cable. I like the detail that it's modular, but you actually have to unscrew it, which is nice, which, you know, confers an, an extra bit of, of extra security to the connection here. Yeah? So that's a, it's a nice cable, nice termination on the on the IEM side as well. Um, nicely built shell. I'm using these tips only because uh i i was able to get a just a slight ever so slightly nicer fit that was it the, the, to be to be 100 percent truthful the difference between this tip and the uh, yellow one that the, the kb ear brings is very very minimal the only thing that i did notice is that the kb ear uh, 07 the yellow one um, has a tendency of accentuating a little bit more of a dip there uh, after 5k p after after the 5k area which uh, which i'll show to you in the graph in a second while with this green tip which i usually uh, get from panon it comes with the panon iems and the isn iems um that tip is uh, reduced and that's why ultimately I, I i selected this one okay so it's a nice looking shell well built it's got you know got a nice way to it Nothing, I mean, very understated, nice HCK there on the face plate. Very, very classy. It just doesn't, you know, it's very unassuming. Um, the only little, it's not, it's a, this is a minor nitpick. The IM, because it is pretty heavy, and the, hook, the ear hook is actually quite strong, um, it has a tendency, if you don't actually get it fitted properly, to kind of wiggle itself out after a little bit. But... I mean that's really a nitpick, okay? Nothing, nothing that's a, a major concern of any way, of any sort. Anyway, uh, that's the, the 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 Himalaya there. What have I selected then uh, and to include into this uh, the forgotten ones group? Well, uh, the BQUIZ wind, the, the Tenstrom Origin, the TROI I1, the TFC crown the tfz king edition and the nf audio na2 plus uh are my contenders obviously the the the, the origin and uh, the um bq i said wind are, are, are not forgotten they are they have been uh, re released recently and have been uh, talked about very positively by a number of reviewers including myself the ones here that perhaps have fallen already into that forgotten category are the na2 plus although it's still available NF Audio 
hasn't really released a single DD, at least of this price, which is $169 or you know, around there, hasn't released anything to substitute it. So this is still currently there, the top of the line. Uh, the crown from TFZ is, in effect, you could say a substitute to the King Edition, uh, although the price increase was quite significant. I mean, you can pick up the King Edition from Linsol for $129. It's also got the switch there on the faceplate. But it's very, very, it's also got the switch there, very unassuming, a bit of a fingerprint magnet. Let me just clean this up here. Um, there you go. Okay, and then um, the crown, as I was saying, uh, is also but it, it, it's it's got that switch for the tuning and you know it's, uh, it's two hundred nineteen dollars. The TRI I one we are talking about already the the three hundred dollar price bracket. The Himalaya again uh, three hundred just over three hundred for 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 it. The um, uh, Origin two hundred forty nine two hundred fifty nine depending on where you get it from in the wind about two hundred nine dollars. So there's a a wide range of values here in that the two most expensive ones are in fact the TRI I1 and the, the Himalaya. Truth be told and, 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 and you know credit must be due, they are the ones which also have probably the nicest cable and the nicest the nicest accessories with them. Um, but you know it's it's all good to have nice cables, all good to have a nice accessory selection. But what is the sound? Okay, now these IEMs here again with the exception to a certain extent of these two but these two are here uh, and, and you'll understand why uh, these IEMs here have all got uh, very much the same uh, philosophy of tuning as uh, I, I, I mentioned in a, in a review which I did which was the Forgotten Ones Part 2 which is they've all got uh, a 2 uh, just over 2k peak and then a 5k peak so those, those are two frequencies which are quite pronounced in these IEMs uh, you know, again, it's one of those situations where you either like or you don't like it. I mean, when I did that review of the, the part two where the focus was on the um, uh, Rose Techniques uh, Quiet Sea, we, we, had, we, we had the opportunity, I had the opportunity to show you that there were a number of other IEMs that also did the same thing. Some did it to better effect, some did it to a lesser effect. The Quiet Sea actually did it quite well. The only problem was that I personally f uh, am a little bit sensitive to that 2K area and the way that it had been done, it was pushing that 2K area a little bit too, you know, too much for my liking, especially when the volume was a little bit higher, which led me to have to do a small little retune, very easy retune that you can do, and it automatically it, it, it changes the whole dynamics of the IEM and becomes a, a substantially better IEM, in my opinion. Um, the origin, I mean... Um, it's it's the the we could say it's the upgraded oxygen and I I uh, I uh, fully stand by that. Um, it has got a, a very nice timbre and tonality. It's if you know if you, when you listen to all of these IEMs, there are IEMs that automatically you you are drawn to them. Uh, you just like the way they sound, and the oxygen is one such IEM. It it just has a very nice tonality, a very nice timbre, um, and everything just it, it's just a very pleasant uh, uh, IEM to listen to. The BQEYZ wind um, uh, as well, the same situation. It's an IEM that although graphically you think that, okay, it's going to be maybe a little bit lean on the bass and so on, when you actually listen to it, it actually sounds way more way more dynamic than, than what it um, initially gives you the impression with. And uh, it is an IEM that um, perhaps a little bit more than some others, you know, the cable that you use on it uh, and the tips are, play a very important role. Uh, the cable, in the, in the sense that, uh, and we already have been through this countless times, cables are very subjective if they will really affect or not. It all depends on what their electrical characteristics are and how those electric characteristics interact with the said IEM. But the fact that it's got, you know, a bone conduction and then the, um, and then the cable, uh, this particular cable from Hakugei has got certain specific characteristics. The combination of the two or of the three, the dynamic driver, the bone conduction and the cable, uh, it favors the sound in, in making it not come across as maybe as thin as it does come across with the stock cable. That's just my opinion, my perception with the music that I listen to. It's not a huge day and night difference, but it's enough to be to be noticeable, okay? Uh, and the tips definitely, well, the tips always are very important. Let's, let's, let's be realistic. Now, let's get into the, into the Himalaya with a little bit more detail. 
I started off with the gold nozzle, which is the ballast one, and you know, at lower volumes, okay, fine, it's it's nice, it's a, it's it's got a nice, agreeable sound. It doesn't really, uh, you know, do anything wrong. But when you start pushing the volume slightly, that's when you start seeing that the way that it scales, at least for me, in my opinion, is not exactly the ideal. And you know, when you're talking about, of course, three hundred dollars. Uh, I was expecting a little bit more. I was. I mean, this is the top of the line, so I want, to, and especially if it's competing against things like the Origin, if it's competing against like the Wind, if it's competing against the EA One Thousand, the Fermat, if it's competing against the Duno Falcon, which I, I could have included, but I just didn't include yet because I thought it was just going to be too overwhelming, and and it was it, it 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 made no sense. These two are more than sufficient to position well the Himalaya and the rest of the IEMs here. Yeah. Um, you know, you you have you want to have something that is um, um, really sp special, really stand out. I, I have nothing against let's let's you know the companies that are trying a different style of tuning or or following their own tuning style, which is the case of BQYZ. It very much follows its tuning style always. But you know, you want to make sure that the sound that is then given to us, it's it's a nice sound and. The Himalaya, once you start, you know, pushing it, it's no, I, I, I didn't like the way it scaled. I tried the black nozzle, and the black nozzle, contrary to what they say, is basically the same thing as, a, as the balance. There's really nothing, I mean, the differences are so minor that I, I struggle to pick them up. Where I did pick up the difference was with the blue nozzle, which uh, accentuated more the bass, but it did that by actually shutting down and making that whole upper frequency, so the upper mids and treble become more, more subdued. So I just didn't like that presentation at all. I, I found that it was overly warm, in my opinion. So, uh, not a hundred percent happy with what I was listening. Uh, I said to myself, "Now let me see. I've got to try and do something here." So initially, on the gold nozzle, uh, I took it and I added a tantrum. You can see there that the, the filter it's got on there is not stock filter. It's a tantrum oxygen filter, and that by itself already completely changed the dynamics of the of the Himalaya. Uh, it controlled those peaks that we were talking about of two and five k more or less, brought them down to a more to a more acceptable level, and it just made the whole overall sound of the IM become way more pleasant. Still not content with that, I said to myself, hold on, let me see if this thing will accept the tuning nozzles from the EA500 and EA500LM and Fermat, and lo and behold, it does. That there is a tuning nozzle from an EA500 with a uh 300 grade filter if i'm not mistaken I'll, I'll confirm that with you when i show you the graphs so that's a ea 500 filter uh nozzle sorry with a 300 grade uh, filter on there this nozzle is just slightly longer than the stock ones and with this nozzle then yes then i finally was able to get this to sound the way i like or the way i i uh, i personally prefer let's put it that way um and, and what is that? It's got a, it now sounds very much like the oxygen. Uh, and, you know, uh, although I just mentioned uh, a few minutes ago that, yes, I praise companies wanting to try their own thing. That's very nice. I think that if they had provided a nozzle that did this tuning, um, the Himalaya would perhaps have been received in a different manner. It would have been received with more enthusiasm. Because obviously, like I said, uh, you know, when you're talking $300, you want to have something special. Fine, it's got the tuning nozzle, it's got a nice cable, the nice tips, the nice build. Everything is very nice, but the sound is very much the sound that you get on a uh, sub $100 IM. Uh, you know, with, uh, without wanting to in any way sound mean, but that's the reality. I mean, the difference between this, for example, and uh, the Quiet C that I tested in the part two of, of this series of reviews, uh, it, it's it's not a price difference which you will say uh, how is it possible that a forty odd dollar IEM is sounding as good as a three hundred uh, you know, dollar IEM? How is it possible? And it's all down to just the tuning. So if they had perhaps implemented a tuning like the one that I've done here, uh, I think yes, things would have been substantially better. With the stock gold nozzle, stock gold nozzle, like I was saying, at lower volumes, bass is nice, the mids are nice, the highs, uh, I found it could have, could have done with a little bit more detail. Its biggest issue was when you started uh, increasing the volume and I just didn't like the manner in which it scaled. 
in terms of its technicality, soundstage was was fine. It was okay. It wasn't it wasn't anything there that could be you know pointed as negative. The the imaging was pretty decent, better better imaging than actually soundstage. And then the timbre and the tonality, although not bad, I found them to be sometimes just a little bit off. It just sounded a little bit off somehow. So overall, okay, it was fine, you could say. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say it's good. It was fine. But it wasn't an IEM that I would say, oh, no, go out and buy it and get it because it's definitely, uh, you know, uh, competing with the big boys in this category and it's it's worth it. No, I, I'm, I, can, I cannot say that. Uh, I would be lying if I said that. However, with the SimGot filter and the, the, the no, nozzle and filter like I've implemented, uh, I can very confidently say now that if you can pick it up at a value which approximates the value of the origin, or perhaps even lower than that, so if you can pick it up with a discount, then this is definitely an IEM that is worth considering. Why? Because with that nozzle, the whole presentation is just totally different. It, like I said, it's got very much a presentation very similar to the origin, and I'll show you the graphs now in a second and you will see. The base is much nicer, it's now much fuller. Uh, gone are the peaks and, the, and, and, and that, are, that are existing in the, sto in the stock with the stock filters, which I mean, honestly, uh, anyway, let's just carry on. Uh, gone are those peaks. Um, it, it just sounds way more harmonious, way more coherent. Everything male vocals, female vocals, technically as well. It's, it's a substantially better sounding I am. I mean, you take things like, for example, Feels Good from Rashan Peterson, which is a song that I like using quite often. With the stock nozzle, okay, it sounded fine. It didn't, it didn't sound anything special. With this SimGot EA500 nozzle, it's actually from the kit. Uh, with the EA500 kit nozzle and the, the, the filter, wow, very, very nice. That's all I'm gonna say, very nice. Um, so that, that they, I think, in a nutshell, kind of gives you an idea of what the nice HK is about. In its stock original format, it's a, an IM which, like I said, doesn't perform that much better than a, a, a sub $100 IM. Uh, but once you've modified or once you've changed the nozzle, and done what I've done with the with the, in this particular unit, then yes, then you can start seeing that there is magic and that the driver that is being used there is a good driver. Okay, now taking it then and comparing it with uh, with the rest or, or trying to position it with the rest, and I'm going to talk with it. I'm going to talk about it in its modified format, not in its unmodified format, because in its unmodified format it doesn't stand the chance with either the BQYZ or with the Origin. That's the reality. And even with some of these on this side, it doesn't stand a chance. Okay, uh, in its modified format, it's you no know, trading blows with the BQYZ and the Origin. The biggest uh, hindrance that it has is the price. Uh, it is still somewhat difficult to 100% justify the extra 60 or $70 or actually $100 of the BQYZ wind, especially when the wind is actually a hybrid if you consider that the bone connection is, a, is, a, is another type of driver there. So I would say that this makes sense under two very specific conditions one you have no issues with doing you know tuning modifying after all if you're buying an IEM with nozzles then that is something which is assumed that you like to tune play around first that's the first thing and the second thing is that you are able to pick it up at a reduced price compared to its normal price so if you pick it up at anywhere between 240 250 dollars then yes then I would say confidently go for it you're not gonna be you're not gonna regret it okay um, the one thing that I did like very much about it in its modified format is how the timbre and the tonality now have become much more along the lines of what I like. It's got a very agreeable, I mean, like I said, this and the origin in terms of sound, they sound incredible, both of them, okay? Compared then to these ones here where, uh, you know, the, the NA2, uh, the NA2 Plus, the, 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 the King Edition, uh, or the two uh, really forgotten ones because nobody talks about these anymore although you can still buy them the crown as well is going to end up falling in, in that category and the, the tri i1 um the tri i1 uh, also has that issue of the of the um stock tuning not being the ideal i'm using the the, the, the clarion tips as you can see and as you can also notice, I've done a small little mod, and that mod was precisely to do away with those peaks. And the mod is just a 400k, a 400 value filter on it. With the 400 value filter on it, the TRI is 
It is now a substantially nicer sounding AM. Is it worth its money? Mm, I, mm, I'm not going to say confidently yes, but it does have things, certain things going for it. Technically, it is uh, perhaps on the level of the modified Himalaya, you know. Um, but overall, overall, this TRI I1 with the modification on the filter and Himalaya with the modified filter as well, Himalaya comes out on top. No questions. Uh, the fact that it's got the, the actual the, 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 the removable nozzles, just that in itself already gives it a plus point because I mean if you if you listen to the Himalaya with stock gold nozzle and you listen to this in its stock format this already is better than that uh, this um, I don't know the try i1 there's just something there that okay it sounds fine but it doesn't sound like a $300 IEM again okay so the Himalaya is a superior IEM to the try i1 um, the TFZ the crown and the king edition these two are actually quite interesting they both have also again that issue of the speaks and so on and so forth. Although, in the case here of the TFZ Crown, they've reduced already that 2K peak. Um, and the filter that's there, that switch does also have a certain effect. Uh, so it's really not a problem on this one per se. The, the edition, the King Edition, yes, it does need uh, to be also, in my opinion, uh, a little bit modified. And again, I've used the filter on it. Um, and with the filter, this with the filter, and as it stands here now, it is a nicer sounding IEM than the Crown. Why? Because it's got a little bit extra mid bass, which complements then the rest of the energy that the mids and the upper mids and the treble give us in a way which in which the crown is not able to do. Uh, the crown has got nice sub bass focus. It doesn't bleed into the, into the mids or anything the bass, but it sometimes just comes across way too thin. Uh, and when you're comparing both of them, you know it's it's uh, it's noticeable. Okay. On top of that, like I said, we have a hundred dollar price difference here. The, the nozzle, the, you know, the filter for the nozzle here costs next to nothing. So if I went to go for a TFZ, uh, I'll be honest with you. However much I actually enjoyed the, the 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 crown, and I and I can understand its 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 design premise and its tuning and everything. I think the King Edition would be the one that I would go for. Comparing them with the with the Himalaya, uh, the crown, in my opinion, is inferior in its sound to the Himalaya. It, it just it, it just cannot uh, keep up. The e King Edition does uh, simulate or does emulate the Himalaya better in terms of its bass and its mids and and the, you know it does. The, I like more this you know uh, akin of the uh, of the himalaya then i do the crown the crown just uh, for me just gets beaten by the himalaya again don't forget the himalaya with the modified filter okay now uh that's that and then finally uh, the the nf audio uh the na2 plus uh there's actually two models the nm and the na the nm is a little bit thinner in the base the na is a little bit more bass heavy and this is the one that i think is the better model of the two uh, funny enough when you look at the graph you'll see that the base in terms of its base curve is very similar to the base curve of for example the the the, the you know the the, the bq as it wind and the and the origin uh, it's just got significantly more energy in the upper mids and treble than it does those two. And you would you would think that by looking at the graph, oh, okay, this has got so much bass, it's, um, so much energy, it's probably going to be shouty or anything of the sort. And funny enough, no. Um, the, NA2, the NA2 Plus sounds very competent. It's got very much, um, I would even go as far as saying it's got very much a, a studio, a monitoring type of sound. Um, it, the bass is got in, it's it's in the right quantity, the right amount. It goes deep. Uh, one song that I like listening to quite often is "Deeper" from Pete Belasco, and it, it does that song flawlessly. Uh, you know, really nothing that I can I can point to it as oh no, it's not doing it nicely. No, it does that perfectly. The lady's not amused as well from Jeff Cascaro does that song very nicely. It's only in specific songs like for example. Uh, from dusk to dawn that I did notice that the NA2 just lacked a little bit extra There was something that was missing or if it's up and up from Jeff Ryan then that extra energy that it's uh, present in the upper mids and treble uh, it, It's noticeable. So it's it's not It's not where it is most comfortable. So I wouldn't call it a a, a, a very versatile sounding I am in terms of of its genres that it can play now um, 
comparing it to the to the um, uh, to the Himalaya, it's actually interesting because I would say that this is out of the IMs that have become forgotten. Well, out of these these two, these two, the King Edition and and the, the NA2 Plus. The NA2 Plus has got no mods. It's stock. And it, uh, in its stock format, it's actually a more pleasant listen than the Himalaya in its stock format. So I would take the NA2 over the, the, the Himalaya with its stock tuning nozzles and everything. N n any day, okay? Once it's modified, yes, the, 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 this does become substantially better. And yes, it does edge out the NA2. But it's actually interesting to see how the NA2 Plus, let me not forget the plus there because there's also the NA2. Let us not forget that the NA2 Plus, uh, being an IM that's oh, maybe what four, going on to maybe five years old, it actually is uh, still very capable of keeping up uh, and, and even sometimes on occasion even doing slightly better than the Himalaya, even modified. So, this I would give it top marks for an IM that. Uh, although forgotten, although not very, very much talked about, it's still very competent in its sound. And the same thing very much goes here for, for the King Edition. The King Edition, in its stock format, I would say no. I don't really like those peaks that it has. But once you've just added that filter on it, totally different beast and very, very competent. So much so that I would prefer this modified to the Crown. Uh, uh, which is now the, the, the most recent one uh, from TFC. Um, and that's it, guys. Um, I think I've been able to very much position the Himalaya, um, uh, you know, uh, in its stock uh, settings or with the stock nozzles. Not an IEM that I was, let's say, terribly impressed with. But once you've done that small little mod, and especially if you're already a, a sim got owner, uh, and you've got those uh, nozzles, and you've got that tuning kit, and I mean, and a tuning kit is not expensive. A tuning kit costs what ten dollars. Well, you know, if you are willing to play around with that tuning kit, and, and you can pick this up, like I said, with a nice discount, I would definitely recommend the Himalaya. Definitely, the driver is a competent driver. It is a good driver. It's well built, well accessorized, like I've mentioned before. And with a slight little, slight little adjustment in the tuning, it becomes a, a, an absolute beast and an eye, and it's very much. Uh, worth uh, attention okay guys show you now the graphs and we'll wrap it up hi guys and welcome now to the graph section here for the nice HK Himalaya let me just remove here some of these graphs okay so this is the nice HK Himalaya with the gold nozzle so um, you have like uh, these two peaks just uh, just over 2k and close to five like I mentioned and you've got this huge dip here then a couple of related peak to so the next thing some extension passed uh, with this is the balance tuning apparently this is with the black nozzle which they say it emphasizes the high frequency but honestly I didn't see any difference between the two uh, I didn't hear any difference and the graphs confirm that they graphed exactly the same as you can see uh, and, uh, just to note that the base is very nicely done I mean the the, the slight drop that you notice yet yeah, it's, it's imperceptible but it's, it's a very nicely done the base is very nicely executed it sits within a window of roughly six and a half dbs it's a very nicely done base uh the pin again is is in its stock format is what is a little bit higher so we're talking uh we're talking about uh, almost almost 12 dbs of pin again so it's 79 at its lowest uh, 91 almost so yeah, about 12 dbs of pin again and, and this is and it's the ratio between these two that then makes the, the himalaya uh, at lower volumes, it's it's fine. Like I mentioned, it sounds it doesn't sound uh, you know it sounds okay. It's just when you start pushing the volume, it doesn't scale properly because this area just increases way more than what does the bass, and so it it doesn't keep up. Okay, and then with the blue filter, which is this last one here, um, they call it the bass uh, filter. Uh, I appreciate what they've done in terms of lowering it here. Yes, you do notice that. There's, there's significantly more, 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 more bass present, more lower frequency present. It doesn't. It, it now does scale substantially better, but um, it, it just, it's just overly dark. Okay, I, I just didn't enjoy it because it became overly dark. So what did I do? Uh, I played around with the tips, like I said, and so on and so forth. And so from this, which is the stock gold nozzle, I went to this. Let me just now. Sorry, my apologies. My apologies. Let me actually raise so this one let me raise number 17 let me just align yeah okay so i've aligned it there okay so um 
the and let me let me change the color here so you can stand out a little bit more okay so we can take away the black we don't need that so we can take away the blue as well because we're not going to use that anymore all right so let's let's leave here now uh, try i1 himalaya 16 17 let's make the stock one a different color apology guys apologies okay so the stock Himalaya with the gold nozzle it's in the red and then the um, green one is the modified with the SIMGOT nozzle and uh, and filter the SIMGOT nozzle and filter it's 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 like I said uh, it's the SIMGOT filters the, the nozzle that comes with the kit and then the filter is actually a 350 I mentioned the 300 earlier but it's actually a 350 okay now uh, there's an ever so slight increase in the base here, um, and, and to be honest with you, yes, you you do notice it, but not on all music. And then what you do notice is that decrease here of these two peaks. Everything now becomes more plateau. There's not so much of a dip there. Uh, this year I could have been a little. I mean, I could have got. Well, it's actually there on the eight peak, on the eight k peak. It's the other one that I could have actually made it to be a little bit better. But anyway, you you guys understand. It's not this minor difference here that's going to really change the way it is. This dip, this crevasse here exists very much and it's down to the tips. This red was with the yellow tip, okay, the yellow original tip. And the green was using the green tip that I had there, which is come, which is the Pannon tip. So it, it, it substantially changes that dip that occurs after 5K. That's why I used it, okay? And the Himalaya in this setup sounds way, way, way nicer. Everything sits within, so we're talking about the bass within a window of 8 dBs. Uh, the bay, the the pin again is now um, sorry the pin again is now 10 dBs exactly uh, so there's there's a the, the difference which exists between the two extremes is minor and so everything just scales substantially not, I mean but substantially better you notice it quite quite easily uh, and this is how I, I, I listen to the Himalaya this is how I have my Himalaya set up and this is how I then did all of the comparisons now compared to the things that I that I selected. Let's start here with a try I one. Um, no, yes, try I one. Now let me just quickly show you something and why I modified the try I one so you guys can understand. The try I one. This is its um, stock uh, measurement. Okay, again those peaks there. And, uh, not nice, honestly, not nice. Uh, something that uh, could be substantially improved. So that's what I did, and I added a four hundred grade filter and got this. Let me just align the two here so you can get things here to be a little bit more understandable and you guys can see the difference. Uh, apologies here. And there you go, nicely aligned. Um, the difference that you hear between the two setups is monumental. Uh, you would say, oh, but now you've lost all that detail and this and this and that. Well, I'm going to tell you this much. Uh, I will agree to a certain extent that a little bit less of detail has, has been lost, has been given away, uh, or been given up. But the timbre, the tonality uh, of the, 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 the try I one with the 400 grade filter is much, much nicer. It now may, It's got now a much more pleasant sounding uh, presentation um, it, it doesn't bite you or doesn't you know become harsh at certain points especially with female vocals it was it was quite, uh, quite it was quite intense sometimes and it just sounds overall nicer now when I compare the modified i1 which is what I'm showing you now I'm going to take away that one with the um, uh, Himalaya and let me just change the color here of the Himalaya for something that stands out a little bit more, let's make it red. So red is the modified Himalaya with a SIMGOT filter. Uh, I think you can understand straight away that the Himalaya is the, the, the better tuned I am. Why? First of all, because the balance that is obtained is substantially better. Secondly, you do not pick up on this monstrous 5 dB difference between the two of them in terms of the bass, you don't. What you will uh, um, the one thing that I will give the try one is a bigger sounding sound stage and this here usually 
is an indicator of that. This is a way that a graph can maybe tell you that an IEM has got good or not sound stage. Is when you have this sort of deep and then peak again. Usually this translates into that particular IEM having very nice sound stage. And it does, it does. The Tri-A1 does have a nice sound stage. But compared to the, the Himalaya, uh, in my opinion, the Himalaya is a better IEM. They basically got the same value, same accessories, package, uh, you know, it's just a better IEM. And they've both been modified because unmodified, uh, I would still, still, still un unmodified, I would still prefer the Himalaya. Okay, so that's the Himalaya. Uh, let's just take away a few things yes so it doesn't confuse now let me show you compared with the tantrum origin that's the tantrum origin uh, I'm just gonna make it black so it stands out a little bit more uh, and you can now understand why I like so much the Himalaya with this retune that I did because it basically becomes very much like the, the, the oxygen like the oxygen like the origin my apologies it's got a nice mid bass nicely executed uh, sub bass as well the mids upper mids treble it, it is very they are very similar sounding I mean these differences here are very difficult to pick up trust me uh, what I do notice uh, and that's where you actually see the origin uh, or you can pick up on the origin versus the Himalaya is that the tonality of the origin is just a little bit more silkier it's just a little it's just it's it look it's me it's my music uh, maybe you might not pick it up but it, it just you know when you get used to listening to the origin uh, like I have gotten used to you can very easily identify when it's the origin and I actually helped I, I had my wife kind of trying to you know blind tested me and, and, and tricked me and I only made the mistake once uh, so uh, I could pick up on the origin is it a huge difference no but is it uh, something that uh, and, and, and basically this is one of the reasons why I say if you're willing to modify the Himalaya uh, it's worth it because it, it then will give you a sound which is very much like the origin. And if you like the origin, hey, you know, there you go. It's, it, this is a, a nice alternative. The thing is, of course, you have to pick it up at a good price. Okay. So that's the origin there. Let's take it away. Now let's show you the TFZ crown. Okay, that's the crown. Uh, the crown sounds substantially thinner when compared to the Himalaya. Uh, you wouldn't think so by looking at the graph, but it does sound thinner. Uh, the mids are very much the same thing, and even this area here of the treble, I would say, uh, you know, what the what the crown has extra is is very little. It's it's not it's not really significant. Okay. Um, compared to the King Edition, and now let me show you as well. Actually, let me show you the BQYZ first, and then I'll show you the King Edition. BQYZ Wind. Uh, there you go. Uh, again, very much a situation like the the situation that we had uh, with the with the Origin. Um, very nicely done bass. Uh, in terms of the mids and uh, upper mids and treble uh, uh, more intense than the although it doesn't look that way in the graph it is more intense than than the himalaya it's got more detail better sound stage than the himalaya as well but without a without a doubt the himalaya the bqyz wind uh, and the uh, the origin the, these three are v more similar than different okay more similar than different the one that perhaps has the least bass well not perhaps the one that has the least bass is yes the, the wind um, the one that has got maybe the best sound stage is the wind uh, the one that's got the best tonality and timbre is uh, the, the origin the musicality of the origin is just phenomenal um, and the, the the Himalaya modified, uh, it, it goes and fetches a little bit here and there out of the other two. So it, it, it's, it's a very competent I am very, very competent, the, the Himalaya, once it's modified. The driver is really a good driver. And now finally, uh, oh well, so, well, not finally, first got to show you still the, the uh, NA. This is the NA, the NF Audio NA2+. Plus. Let me just modify, change the color here. Okay, I apologize dear for, for the little um, difficulty in obtaining a cleaner curve here, but it was just being very difficult. It just wasn't allowing. The bass is incredible as well on the NA2. 
uh, where the Na2 loses to the Himalaya modified is in this area here of the of the upper mids into treble, uh, 4.5, let's say 4 to, to 6k. This, this little peak here is noticeable at extremes. Um, but otherwise, uh, and like I mentioned earlier, very competent sounding IEM. Uh, and an IEM that, uh, you know, it's a pity that it, it just didn't get any more attention because it, it does deserve that attention. It is a very nice IEM and I can only uh, hope that if NF Audio does give us another top of the line single DD that they will do something that will uh, be able to outdo the performance of the NA2+. Plus. You know, it's, it's definitely is an IEM that just went under completely under the radar and got forgotten. Uh, and then finally, the, the, the TFZ, the King uh, edition. This is the TFZ King edition in its stock format. And as you can see, again, all those peaks and so on and so forth. Uh, and so that was one of the reasons that led me to say, no, I don't want this like this. I've got to, I've got to improve upon it. And I modified it. I added, um, uh, I added a, a 400 grade filter to it. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me actually just ch check here so I don't mislead you guys. So the TFZ, the King edition. TFC King Edition got, 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 got a 350 filter, okay? So the TFC King Edition got a 350 filter. And with the 350 filter, what we get is what I just showed you there. Let me just take away yeah, the Himalaya for a second. Let me just align the other two. So push here, uh, stock version of the King Edition with the modified one. Uh, and there you go. And again, you, you know, just by reducing these two peaks, the whole presentation of the king is is substantially, substantially improved. And that's how I've got my king as well, modified. Now, the king compared to the crown, uh, and as I stated as well earlier, I prefer the king to the crown. Uh, those, that, that's both of them up. Uh, that little extra bit of mid bass on the king is noticeable. It doesn't let the king sound as thin. Uh, as the crown sometimes does and although it does have that more energy there at the upper mids it still doesn't work against it and i guess it's because of the balance that has been struck here while the, the the crown is less energetic in the upper mids and then the treble gets a boost uh, the king edition has um, more energy in the mids in the upper mids sorry and then the treble is the one that gets uh, gets reduced so i think that was the wiser option and it gives us more of like a W type of presentation as opposed to more of a V-shaped presentation of the crown. Uh, I just just enjoy way more the the, the, the King Edition to be honest with you and, and the, the price $129 you know again well, maybe an item that's worthwhile considering if, if you try, want to try something or if you want to have something different uh, if you don't want to be following let's say the, the normal uh, uh, the normal trends okay comparing it to um, the um, to the Himalaya modified let me just get it here okay this is the Himalaya modified I'm just gonna make it black in color all right so we, it's, it stands out that's how they stack up again you can see a lot of similarities uh, in the tuning so up top here um, this peak you don't really notice it because of the extra bass that, it, that it's got but the extra bass compared to the uh, to the bass of the Himalaya uh, you don't notice that's a big difference that's the that's the reality um, it, it, it doesn't this this difference here is not doesn't manifest itself audibly um, and that's it I mean definitely the the, the the TFZ the King Edition modified with 350 filter um, the uh, NA2 uh, the NA2 Plus, um, which is this one, yeah. Uh, these two definitely are IMs that are, and it's actually interesting to see if I'm just going to call your attention here to something. If you actually see uh, the NA2 Plus and the King Edition in terms of, let's say, above 300 hertz, they are very, very similar. Very similar. Uh, so the, the NA2 Plus, the King Edition modified with the filter, uh, or, or of this older. 
forgotten IMs, two IMs that I think are still worthwhile considering. And if you can pick them up with a discount or something, I think they are definitely worthwhile. As for the Himalaya, as I've already said and mentioned, um, definitely um, do the mod. If you have it, do this mod. Get that the tuning kit from, from SimGot. It's like 10 bucks. And you do this mod. I am very positive that you will enjoy what you will hear. Okay? Guys, as always, like and subscribe. Any questions, please feel free to ask me. You take care now. Bye-bye.